Hi guys, Sarah O'Brien here with the Quality Assurance and Compliance team. Today I wanted to do a little review of point of service documentation. Now this is something that we have reviewed before and Val McIntyre put out a really great video um, for some examples on how this looks. Um, I think back in June or July of last year, so definitely check that video, video out as well. Um, but today I just wanted to go over kind of the, the, the definition of point of service documentation, what it is, what it isn't, um, as well as how it's beneficial, and then maybe go over a little bit about some expectations for point of service documentation. Um, so one of the first things that I'd like to go over is what is point of service documentation? What it is, is having a meaningful conversation with the patient as you're getting some of the information in for that intervention um, at the same time. So you're having a conversation about the, the stuff that you, they did during that treatment session, um, their goals, any updates to them, um, if they have any updates to discharge plans or needing updates to discharge plans, that's a great time to capture that. Um, as well as any of the outcomes for education or treatment that was provided, um, things like pain level or um, or how they, well they could regurgitate some of the information that you provided. So um, it really is very beneficial for both you and for the patient to do point of service documentation, um, but it does take a little bit of planning um, a little bit of um, practice in order to implement. Um, so point of service is not having a patient sit down on a bike or a new step um, while you get your documentation done. Um, it does need to include the patient when you are getting that information into the into the documentation. So um, so if you do have them on the new step, you can get some of that information into the system um, by asking them some questions about their goals, um, maybe even seeing how they're doing on the new step, getting some of that stuff in there. Um, but really, um, one of the things that I have seen and have heard about that has worked really well is kind of carving out a little bit of time um, at the end of the treatment session. So say you have a 55 not rounding 55 minute um, uh, time for you to do with the patient. Um, carving out five to seven minutes at the end of that 55 minute treatment um, to review their goals, review the interventions, um, go over some plans for the next time that you're gonna go um, see them, maybe even updating some of that, um, that discharge planning, that is really going to solidify your documentation because you just did that intervention. Um, it's also going to allow the patient to feel like they have a part in what they're doing because you're asking more questions. You're, you're finding out a little bit more about how they're doing um, and getting it into the record and they can see that. They can see that happening. Um, the other thing that point of service documentation is not for is for those patients that can't have those meaningful conversations, ones that have um, some significant cognitive deficits or, or, or nonverbal um, and not able to express some of the, um, the needs or how they're feeling, how they're doing, stuff like that. that is, those patients really aren't appropriate for point of service documentation. Um, from an expectation standpoint for the company really is that point of service documentation should be done when it's appropriate and as much as it's appropriate um, because we do see those benefits of getting more detail and getting um, higher quality information into the, the documentation. Um, we do want you to do it as much as you can but only when appropriate. So we understand that there are going to be patients who are super hands-on or who have those cognitive deficits that you're not going to see that on. Um, some of the benefits that you might find from point of service documentation um, is that you're not coming to the end of your day with like 15 notes that you have to write. 
um, you will be able to kind of get most of your documentation completed as you go throughout the day. Um, and then by the end of the day, you might be adding in uh, something here or there or just completing one or two documents that, that you weren't able to complete point of service. So from an efficiency standpoint, we really do see that being a beneficial side effect of doing point of service um, documentation. Really, the main benefit is getting that detail into the documentation. Um, so I don't want you guys to go run out there and try point of service documentation and find that it is not the easiest thing to do in the world and then just quit. Um, it is one of those things. It's a skilled practice. Um, it's something that does take practice. So um, really give yourself a couple of weeks of doing point of service documentation um, to see the benefits of it because it will take time to get used to really interjecting that into your treatment and then also um, having those conversations as you're getting that information down. So um, if you have any questions, if you need some um, examples, of course that video that Val posted last year, that's an excellent um, example of how to do it. But um, please reach out to us. You can post below this video in the comments section and we'll, we'll reach back out to you. You can also um, reach out to us at QAC at healthpro-heritage.com. Um, and we definitely welcome your questions and we'll get you directed to the right person. Um, so I really hope this helped a little bit, understanding point of service documentation and how it's beneficial. Um, and I hope you have a great day. And we'll see you next time.